He said my BNP levels were pretty low and a score of 400 or 500 might mean that you're going to die. I've had the BNP test done again in 2022 by an endocrinologist and I'm a little bit nervous about looking at the results. If you are a patient, particularly of the heart, this might give you an idea of what values of B and P might be safe. But I have two warnings. In different places, they may use different units of measurement. So the figures would vary. Plus you need the advice of a doctor and not a patient to accurately evaluate your results. This documentary is all about doctors concealing results, and I think they are letting me die. This can happen to other people, and there is always a reason. Just because doctors could lie does not mean my advice is medical advice. It is a guideline for you to protect yourself and to make better decisions and to get a second opinion. By the way in Ireland, in 2023 July, I am not able to get a second opinion. They made it impossible for me to get a second opinion I am trapped in this, and I am very ill I can almost not walk in July 2023. To continue with my medical story, I had the echo test done in August 2017 under dry V. He didn't lie, and unlike those other doctors, he said it was almost normal. Now I looked at all the quantities in the report. Now I don't know these quantities more than any lay person, but I bothered to look them up on Google. It showed that my left ventricle was relaxing slower than my right ventricle, and I looked it up on Google. It said it was the most conventional form of heart failure. I was 55 years old at the time. I asked DRE about this thing I had found in the echo, and he said roughly that's because you're getting old and nothing can be done about it. I may be getting old at the age of 55 now, I am going to be 65 in August. I am getting even more old. You're not going to understand or agree with my comment that I am getting old is not appropriate. One can argue that the doctor is aged 70 or so. But never mind his age. You can argue he was just giving me a reality check that I am old, and I'm bound to be sick. That's not how the medical profession works. They've been trying to make life better and better, and that means older people live longer, and they're more comfortable. We haven't reached that age, when people live 200 years, and be comfortable. I don't think it'll happen, but it's still not the right thing to say. I think Drivey says I am getting old so I give up. And I think he wants me to give up because there is some treatment out there that is withholding. He is psychologically manipulating me to give up and pack my bags. Well, none of the things I said about me makes sense to the reader. He or she may not agree. It may not be a pleasant thing for anyone to hear they're old and they're going to be sick that's just how I feel. Like they should never tell you to pray to God. That sounds dreadful if a doctor says it because he seems to be saying there's no hope and ask God because I cannot do anything. There was another item I noticed on my echo, which was abnormal, it was dreadfully high. It was supposed to be 30, but it was 130. This quantity was PVAT Papa Victor Alpha Tango. It said something like pulmonary hypertension, and I don't understand to this day, I haven't figured out what it is, but they just left it, I'm sure he knows a lot more than I do. There was only one more thing that happened with Dry V that concerned me. They called from there. They said that a woman doctor wanted to see me privately. If I cooperated, she would tell me the exact reason for all my physical symptoms. She was an ethnic minority, which makes no difference to me. You see the Pembroke Mental Center had initially made allegations I did not want to consort with them as I preferred males and whites. They of course wanted to personally give me psychiatric treatment with their own bare hands, not doctors, as well as if they had their way would incriminate and deport me. But they did not have that level of power. After an initial meeting, I decided it was distasteful to conduct a conversation with Pembroke. I would do the same thing to a white male if he behaved like them. All I did was end the conversation to never resume again. I don't think anyone can make a case to win someone's affection. It is unlawful to stalk and harass for years to fight an equality case. Perhaps women from the lowest strata of society like they hail from would automatically bow to them. Animals with uncontrollable urges. Now this female doctor asked to meet me. She also offered a reward for meeting her. She also acted like she would do anything for me. Men used to say contemptuously about some girl, she will do anything for me. Nowadays, men have learned to respect such a woman and consider it normal behavior, even if he is not interested in her. I did not think it was appropriate behavior for a GP to act like she would do anything for a prospective patient.
I attended as she said she would be there waiting all the time for me. But when I arrived, I made some silly excuse and shied away. There was a threat from the staff, from her, from Dr. E. I would not get medical help, I would not ever get well or get a diagnosis if I did not see her. I decided at the last minute not to see her, despite the rewards associated with obedience and penalties if I did not. The rest is history. Something feeling like a sore throat, but is actually on a lower level than the throat, flu-like symptoms, carrying a heavy rock or wood in the middle of the chest. I felt that I was only a broad staircase, and the steps were very tall. I was descending. Each cardiac episode was like a bump when I landed on the next lower step. That means that after I attended accident and emergency, and recovered from the episode, I felt weaker. A plateau, followed by a bump again and again. My story is now nearing the end of my stay in the UK. I've concentrated on medical matters. In the first ten or more chapters one have put in many non-medical matters. This gives you an idea of the personality behind the illness story. My immigration case was progressing. At every step, I was getting a refusal or negative decision. When I had the in-country appeal, as most people will understand, it is in a court of appeals, because the original case was lost. It was called an in-country appeal, because there would be another appeal after leaving the country. But if you know anything about immigration, you will never win an immigration case to stay in a country after you leave the country. So there's only one more thing I wish to add to the UK chapters, and it's not a medical matter, which is that around the end of 2017, I almost got taken for interviews at Eaton House. Interviews is a slang term at Eaton House, for deportation plans. A very good man saved me, but I got some legal advice at that time. I told that lawyer that the UKBA did not believe my allegation that I did not consort with the Pembroke Mental Health Center. That center was, by the way, keeping bogus records as if I was seeing them. The sentence I just spoke would cause problems for some people of which more are women than men. They would ask, the mental health agency is there as help you. Why would they fabricate records as if you attended with them? The sincere contention of these ladies, even if it does not flatter me, is that a mental health agency would never fabricate records and that my information is spurious. Maybe I am making up the whole thing because I am crazy? It is indeed my word against theirs, they are the mental health center. As I said, these anecdotes are merely stories and do not contain proof. A person is at liberty to believe or disbelieve everything I have said in this documentary. So let us apply logic. If my allegation were to be true, the Pembroke Mental Health Center did fabricate records to look like I consorted with them, that was not a respectable thing to do. But if my allegation were to be false, I am either mistaken or purposely lying. I suppose the weak argument is that I am crazy, the stronger one is that I lack respectability. A person who falsely accuses someone of not being respectable is not respectable himself slash herself. Mohini wishes to add that mental health service agencies are attracting employees people hailing from socially and educationally backward groups. The people who take on such a job, whether they are natives of the United Kingdom or from any country were academically backward at school from an early age. This refers to the lower sections of society within each race or country. I apologize for an opinion that could be wrong, but if anyone verifies they are likely to find this is true. Why am I labeling them? Because I am alleging they did something they are not supposed to do. When one makes an allegation of poor conduct against someone, it is pretty normal to expose what may not be a secret about their family background or upbringing. One can argue there is no status occupied by people where those people never sin. I agree, personally, 100%. However, while they say all kinds of things about me that are fabrications, nothing is provable. They are taken on trust. So I am making an allegation of what is a physical fact. They are, including male employees, a person who, from the age of two, found themselves as intellectual bottomers in school and society, 